live out of Super Sun Eagles there. Welcome here on the show, 360 Sport on Trust TV. I'm Adeni Ajishafe. Time to take you around the world of sport as we look at uh, stories trending for our, our team, Super Sun Eagles. They traveled to Mauritania and they were able to win their game 5 4. And the second leg will be coming up in Kaduna where they want to qualify for the AFCON. That's big soccer AFCON that will be coming up. Well, the good thing is that our team won the first leg and now they are back in Nigeria as we speak right now. They are on their way to Kaduna State where the second leg will be coming up there. For Team Nigeria, big soccer team, uh, they are really trying their best. Uh, for a, a while now, we've not had a team, and now the team is back, and their first game, they were able to win in an away match there. 5 4 the one you know, I shot against Mauritania, and now the second leg coming up in Kaduna State. Well, wishing them the best there as we roll through the stories that we have for you on the show uh, that has to do with uh, 360 Sport. For Olympics, yes, three days to go. And just as we speak right now, Team Nigeria battle ready over there in France. Not forgetting Super Falcon starting on Thursday where they'll be facing Brazil. A big match. Uh, you can call it that match, that match a, big, a big one there because uh, we know that our ladies are battle ready there. Well, beating Super Falcons is crucial. That's the first story we are looking at uh, where Brazilian attacker, her name is Adriana, already planning how they're plotting how they can out of stage or uh, beat uh, Super Falcons of Nigeria, which I will actually say, what if we defeat them? That's a big one there. Starting with that story with Olaole Peter, the usual suspect. Let me use the word sports suspect <laughs> on the show. Good to have you, Olaole Peter. Okay, Adeni, good morning. It's my pleasure being here. I'm sure you're not feeling the cold at all. No, I'm not. At least no, uh, today I'm a Chelsea fan. It's very obvious the way you are. I'm a Chelsea fan today. Oh, really? from, from... Black and blue. <laughs> How come we have the black mother? Okay, blue? Manchester City fan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. the first story there. Okay, um, I think it's the main game they are playing. Uh, we shouldn't we shouldn't fall into it. Uh, they are the female team is not as good as their male counterparts, and even the male counterparts, and uh, they are dealing with their old glory. And um, first, uh, if you look at the last five matches that Nigeria have played before this competition, um, we we are able we are able to score uh, seven goals. We play against Cameroon home and away. We play against uh, South Africa home and away. Then we play against uh, uh, Cape Verde also, which we won 5 0. And from the five matches, we did not concede any goals. So that is not by luck, that's not by chance. It shows that the girls, when it comes to the, to the defense, they are very I mean, defensive minded. Uh, they have the experience. The goalkeeper is doing very well also. So for that, I have the confidence. Then if you look at the Brazilian team also, their last five matches, and they won two, they drew two, and they lost one against the USA, the US team, which we know they are one of the best, if not the best in the, in, in the world. So that shows that both teams are coming from the angle of strength. So it's not as if our last five matches we've lost. And then and I recall in 2008 that we met with the Brazilian team also. Yes, they defeated us 3-1. That was in 2008. And this is 2024. A lot of things that happened. Our experience, our exposure, the caliber of players we had then is not as good as the one that we have currently right now. So whatever mind game that they are playing, I think they're not going to work on us. And I've seen a lot of videos on the, the, the girls' training, the, the, their morale, their spirit at the camp. It's like... They are battle ready, and it's going to be it's going to be our first match at the Olympic. So that shows that the best they can get from us is a draw. Mm. And saying it's very crucial to them, to us also, it's not only crucial to us; it is our priority to to defeat them because the group that we have, we don't need to take any chances. And our first match is as good as our last match, so we have to go all, all out there on the first match and give it to them and make sure that uh, we make a very good statement to tell the others that we are here for business and we've been absent for quite a number of years but now that we are here we are here to get a medal we are not here to just participate well other lift have been talking concerning super falcons they are their first match against brazil we are brazilian uh, adriana uh, they have been try trying to play mind games there that they will make sure they defeat us but uh, we believe that super falcons are equal to the task they are back to ready to see how they will do well in this competition there. Well, uh, our team, Super Falcons, an incident happened concerning that team uh, just yesterday and it went viral while they were inside the lift. Although the ladies, they, could, they actually took the story for cruise. They were just there, take, even though they were scared, but to some extent, they were able to roll through. Let's have a glimpse of that particular incident inside the elevator concerning Super Falcons. <laughs> 
Et nous avons fait une discussion en tête de vidéos. Je ne veux pas de vidéos. Je ne veux pas de vidéos. Je ne veux pas de vidéos. Nigeria for life there. You just saw the way the ladies took that particular incident. It was a tough one anyway because they were stuck in the elevator. And <laughs> I love the fact that despite the fact that, that it was a tough moment, but they were still able uh, to make it like make it very lightly. <clears throat> That, uh, that Nigeria spirit for you, even in um, the face of whatever you are facing, you still see that smile, mm. that uh, beacon of hope in us. And if this has happened to other teams, other countries, you see them screaming, shouting, but you can see the, the, the team spirit among the teams. They are joking, they are laughing, even if the situation is worse than that. So that shows that in the team, they are really, the, the, the spirit in the camp, it's more than what we are really seeing. And that is something that is very, very important. You know, um, if you have a team like that, even if someone is down, you have other people that will be able to do what? Lift them up. That will lift them up. So that is what is really needed. So the spirit, I mean, the spirit they, they showed here is what we want them to do also on the pitch. And on a lighter note, this happened in France. <laughs> as in France. And you can see that when incident like it occurred, it's not because um, we, we we are not prepared or we don't have what it takes. In some, if if this happens in Nigeria, we will have condemned ourselves. We will have been the one condemning ourselves, and this happened in France. That shows that <clears throat> anytime we have incidents like it's like a car, you can go out in the morning, you start your vehicle, everything is looking out fine, and on the road you can just pack off. So it's happened just like we human beings also. You don't determine, you don't know what's going to happen in the, next few, in the next few hours. So we should try and be positive about our country. That is the message here. Mm -hmm. If this could happen in far away France, developed country, top tier country. The host of the competition. The, the host of the competition. <laughs> and you can see the response time also. They came immediately, nobody's panicking, and they got them out. So we have the same thing in this country. We'll be the one condemning ourselves. So we should try and be positive about our country, about our nation, that whatever we are going through, we're not the only one going through it. So I think um, it's, it's, it's a message. But for the girls, I like their confidence. If you are in that lift mm. all alone, probably you'll have been shouting and screaming Man, and, all alone. and, and conf yeah. confessing <laughs> all your sins. <laughs> you said all alone. They were, they were a team. Uh, if, you, if Actually, any, anyone could have been scared alone. Okay, okay, yes, know, but now they are a team. So maybe... I'm, Even I'm, if you are not alone, if you are with them, I know you are the need. <laughs> you have been confessing the last thing you committed before you entered the Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, just to throw some light on that concerning Super Falcons <clears throat> where they were stuck in the elevator. Over there in France, ahead of their game against Brazil, they'll be playing on Thursday as the opening match of their group. And it's going to be a tough one because the Brazilians know what is at stake. They have not forgotten the hurry what our men did to them. Uh, in 1996. So they are trying to see everything to pay us back at the Olympics. Now, she's talking about the Olympics now. Uh, far back 1996, uh, Team Nigeria did well, especially in long jump, Chioma Ajunwa, and also the team called Dream Team of Nigeria, they were able to win gold, the first African team to do that. And right now, Sports Ministry, the Ministry of Sport Development and Science Partnership to document 1996 Olympic history because so far that has been the best moment for Nigeria at the Olympics. Okay, um, a good one, but is that what we need? If they want to document the Nigerian story, they should come to the best station that can do it. Hmm. We can do that for Let's them. Let's document the Nigerian story for yes, them. Yes, <laughs> do sport for them. What they need to look at, to look at how the team were made, the preparation, the process, the people involved. That is what we need to do to make sure that we have the repetition. We don't need the museum to do this. We don't need to create, a, we don't need to spend money unnecessarily. The athletes are still alive. We don't need hmm. that. So we have some of the players that made up the dream team. Go to them one-on-one. -on -one. What's the hope is still around, alive? Buffalo Joe is still there. So try as much as possible to tap from their knowledge. How are you able to achieve what you achieved? Hmm. Chema Juma, what happens to her? Is she, well, was she self-motivated as at that time? Or the government make preparation, adequate preparation for, for, uh, for the exposure needed? 
the experience needed to achieve that. So you don't need all these uh, theoretic, theoretical documents that you want to go and set up a committee. That's not what we did now. We've been participating in the Olympic for how many years? Since inception, 1956. And we can only boast of how many good medals? Just three good medals. In all, 27 medals. That's all what we've, we've gotten from the Olympics. And look at the number of contingents that we normally go with year in, year out. So that's what we need to really look into. Not to look into where uh, you want to document it. You don't need to document anything. We know that the best, the best uh, session we had in the Olympic was in 1996. <clears throat> so how did you achieve it? How did you go there? What has happened between 1996 and up to today that we are still yet to celebrate anything? That's what we should be looking into. That's what we should try as much as possible to prepare ourselves. Like I said during the show last week, we should have something they call Olympic Village in this country. We have the money to do it. So let's have Olympic, Olympic Village where, where, where we're going to have the people that will be representing us in the Olympic start their training, start camping on time. We can have it in the political zones. Nothing stop us from doing that. How can we get that? Those days, we used to have an um, inter-house sports. Then you can get, like on Sunday, but that's where most of them came from. That's where they came from, from CMS. So what we need to do is to go back to that root, grassroots development. That's what we need. If you don't do the grassroots development, we won't get anywhere. And we need to catch all these athletes. We have to catch them young. So they can have number of years ahead of them, eight years, 12 years, not someone that you just bring after four years, <laughs> nowhere to be found again. So that's why I think the sport uh, ministry really needs to do, not to be going through this, this, this route. Hopefully, things will get better in Nigerian sport. Now, still talking about in Nigeria to the Olympics, and this time around, we're looking at the Minister of Sport Development, Senator John Wan or calling for support from Nigerians. Uh, let's look at our story. Team Nigeria need our support at Paris Olympics. Uh, we know that our contingent are about to ready to see how they will do well in all the 11 uh, events where they will be competing. 87 contingent representing the Team Nigeria now. He says Team Nigeria need our support. See, um, I don't want to be seen as if I'm just here to critique the, the government and the Minister, um, the minister of Youth and Sports. They have our support before. <laughs> it doesn't need to tell us that. They have our support before. We are praying for them. We are going to watch them. We have Nigerians in France that they will go there voluntarily on their own to go and share the team up. But the question is, what preparation did we make before this competition? Mm. What arrangement do we have in place before this competition? What have we done before now? Now, if you support them, but the player doesn't have the skills required, the experience required, the exposure required to perform. What will our support turn to? No, it's a question. What will our support turn to? No, I'm not the So it's that. not really about it's not really about our support. That support, they have it hundred percent without saying it. We love sports in this country. We love sports a lot in this country. We have some people that they can even sponsor themselves to from France. Nigeria to France to watch the match, to watch the Olympic, out of their head, uh, had any money, and come back. That's the support. But the question is, what has the government done before now for all these athletes? We shouldn't be doing fire brigade approach when it is by a day or two days. Today, we are calling for support. Tomorrow, we are clapping for support. Day after tomorrow, we are drumming for support. Yes, it's good. But we need to get them prepared before the competition. Some countries, at the conclusion of the, this Olympic, they start the preparation for the next Olympic. Four years before the time. Four years before the time. And you, you didn't do anything until like two weeks or one month before the, before the competition. And like two or three days, you're not calling for support. Mm. I think we can well, do better. Then see, you. Nigeria, Fire Brigade approach that we always apply. Hopefully, it will get better there. Well, it's still in the continuation of uh, Know Your Athletes that we started last week concerning the team Nigeria to the Olympics. We continue today. We look at set of wrestling. Uh, let's do, uh, uh, talk about the Know Your Athletes there. We have about uh, uh, five or six of them represent Nigeria in wrestling now. Know Your Athlete, as we are waiting for that to be displayed. And also, not forgetting, we have uh, others in table and also discourse. We have Akshti Mutua. Blessing Oboro Dudu, Christiana Ogusaya, 
Oduan Yadeko Roye, Hannah Ruben, and Esther Kolawale. These are the athletes or the wrestlers that represent Nigeria in wrestling. And they are all battle ready. Well, for the women, uh, we really appreciate what they are doing. And for the historic moment, uh, historic achievement, first time ever, three Nigerian women will compete in the discourse at the Olympics. Ashley Anumbra, Chioma Yekwere, and Obiagiri Amechi. Three of them will be competing in disco sport and hopefully we'll be able to get something there. And um, for our table tennis, we have Fatima Belo, Ofyong Edem, Olajide Omotayo, and legendary Kodri Aruna also making it uh, for table tennis. These are our athletes in this sport that are representing us. Last week we did about nine different sports and now we have to at least uh, touch on this for you to see how the contingents are about to ready for the competition. Now, while we're talking about this, let's take you back memory lane. Starting from 1964, when Nigeria won her first uh, medal at the Olympics, we run through till 2000. Uh, let's start with 1964, where we have Noji Maegun. Noji Maegun Center, that's the, is the one with the medal there, uh, won Nigerian first medal at the Olympics, picking bronze in the men's boxing light middleweight category at the 1964 edition in Tokyo, well, he was the first person uh, to win a medal for Nigeria at the Olympics, and he did it in bronze. In 1972, Isaac Ikoria, second right, won bronze in the men's boxing light heavyweight category at the 1972 Olympics in Munich, Germany. Uh, that's the uh, second person at least uh, being able to do it, won bronze for Nigeria in boxing. You can see that boxing has really come uh, a long way, uh, giving Nigeria medals at the Olympics. I'm still talking about the Olympics now. Uh, we moved to 1992, although we have uh, uh, 1984 that actually precede this one there. Well, Nigeria won four medals at the Barcelona 92 Games, silver in athletics, men's 400 by, uh, 4 by 100 meter relay that involved Olakpa Dea Deniken, Davidson Ezinwa, Chidi Imo, Oluyemi Kayode and Osman Ezinwa. Osman Ezinwa and Davidson Ezinwa are actually twin, and they're the race for Nigeria there. Silver in Boston, uh, mix, uh, men's heavyweight David and Zorite. If you remember that name, Richard Igbenegu won uh, silver for Nigeria in men's super heavyweight. Why in Athletics, we won bronze in women's 4 by 100 meter relay that involved Beatrice Utondo, Christy Okpara Topsin, Marion Yali, African Queen, uh, when we call her Queen of the Tracks, and Faith Idehe. Those are the names that did us proud in 1992. In 1984, that also come before 1992 anyway. At the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics, Nigeria won silver through Peter Konyeguachi in the men's boxing featherweight. Also, Nigeria got a fourth stage of medal in athletics with the quarters of Sunday Uti, Moses Ibisian, Rosemi Peters, and Innocent Ebunike, who won bronze in men's 4 by 400 meter relay. Just to take you back memory lane in the world of athletics now, we still have two more to run. In 1996, our glorious year, Nigeria won a record six medals at the Atlanta Olympic <coughs> Games. Gold in women's long job won by Chuma Ajua. Gold in football men's tournament, first African team to win that. Uh, men's under 23 football team, they call them the dream team. Silver in athletics, women 4 by 400 meter relay. Or Labi Siafolabi, Fatima Yusuf, Charity Opara, and Falilat Ogunkoya. For bronze medal in women's 200 meters, went to Mary Onyali. Why Falilas Ogunkoya won bronze in women's, uh, women's 400 meter relay, uh, rather 400 meter race. For bronze in boxing, men's super heavyweight, Duncan Dokwari. If you remember these names, they are our heroes. There in 2000, Nigeria won three medals at the Sydney 2000 Olympics. Gold in men's 4x400 meter relay, Clement Chuku. Jude Monye, Sunday Bada, late Sunday Bada, and then Fioku Don Dobong, uh, Unduka Wazi, and Fidelis Gazama. Why athletics, women's 100 meter hurdles, Gloria Alose, who eventually went to join Spain. Uh, weightlifting, women's 75 kilogram route of Bayfo, taking you back memory lane there. Well, we continue to give you more before the Olympics start uh, to, let, to let you at least have a feel of the performance of Team Nigeria at the Olympics since 1964 down to 2000 and to let you know that for the first time in the history of this sport of this competition we have three Nigerians competing in the discourse category oh uh, okay so that shows that, that tells you what uh, that what you did now just confirm what I said earlier on mm. that uh, the the minister doesn't need to do anything we document it for them and that's what we've just showcased right now and this shows that in boxing We've been doing very well. In 1964, the first time, 
we won the medal. In 1972, we won the medal. In 1984, we won the medal. 19 Bas Barcelona 1992, we won the medal. Atlanta 96, we won a medal. It is only in 2002 that we did not win a medal in boxing. So from six outings at the Olympic, five, we won medals in boxing. Mm. So what have you done when it comes to boxing in Nigeria today? To develop, because that sport to really has earned us a lot of medals. That's earned us, it that's put the Nigerian name on the gold, on the medal, among the nations that have won something at the Olympic. Five medals in six appearances. So that shows that it's not a, it's not it's not a sport that should take with, take lightly. So what have you done to develop it? Absolutely nothing. And you are calling for support. Yes, it's good to call for the support. <laughs> but I'll still repeat this again. We need to prepare for this. Then also we have to go back. We'll continue to say this: the best sporting year, the sporting era of Nigeria is between that 1990 to 1996. Whatever good we've achieved in sports in this country, you trace it back to between 1990, 92, especially 94 and 1996. The best time that they rated the Super Heat goals was in where? Was it was 94. 1994. We won, the, we won the Nations Cup, Tunisia, we went to the World Cup. And he actually started from Senegal started from Senegal 92. Mm -hmm. So that is why I say what we need to do is to go back and what is the, what is the uh, success story? It's about grassroots development. You cannot move as a nation if you don't develop your grassroots. It's about talking about growing the economy. If you don't grow your economy locally, take it or leave it. You cannot move as a nation. You can't be, I mean, you can't be de depending on imported goods all the time. No. You have to be exporting also. You have to be an export nation because this is a country that we deal with services. And a country that is into service, you will never, never grow economically. So that's why we are talking about sports this time around. So what we need to do is to develop. You made mention that we, we, we made history that the first time 30 females mm. will be representing us when it comes to discourse. discourse. I'm sure the millennials will be asking themselves, what's called discourse? discourse. <laughs> it's not disco, it's discourse. Discourse. Mm. I don't know if you get the point. This is what we used to do when we are in the secondary school those days. We have discourse, we have, short put. We have short put, we have javelin. We do all these sports every day. PHE is very, very important. I can still remember very well. We normally have PHE every Tuesday. Every Tuesday is physical and health education. You have to go out there to practice what you know how to do best. Some do the uh, pole vault, and this is a sport that every, is... Every, because what you have then at school is not what we have now. That most of, most of the schools we have now, they are two bedroom or three bedroom flat. So what space do you have to practice all the sports? So that is a problem. So we have to go back to those days. What are we doing wrong that we need to correct? In terms of those days, it's like a war. Because we have some schools that they will mark themselves. Oh, the last uh, edition, you won gold. The last edition, you won medal. Okay, let's go back there. We're going to... So that is where you start to develop people. Nipoga game, Nuga games. Mm. What has happened to it? So these are the avenue for us to really pick the best of the best. Catch them young. Start training them. Start exposing them. Giving them the skills required before they will get it. Until we do that, we'll continue to say this over and over again. So I think it is high time we take sports serious in this country. Because if you know the amount of uh, revenue we are losing for neglecting a lot of sports, sincerely, we will think twice before we do it. Because sport, as we always say here, is business. And you have to take it as business. You just have to take it as business. Zero Larry Peters has been talking concerning Nigeria. Team Nigeria to the Olympics, where we took you down the memory lane. And if you check boxing, is it from 1964? You look at Nojim Maegun, Isaac Korea, not forgetting Kongyegu Achi and Zurite, Dokiwari, making us proud in boxing. We need to go back. 
and at least really see how we can develop boxing now. Athletics, yes, we're doing well there. We've really done when it comes to uh, boxing uh, in those days, and now we need to take it back to that level where it used to be, where we have a lot of boxers taking, uh, making Nigeria so proud. Uh, the 1964, 72, 1996, 2000, uh, 2000 uh, uh, all that. But right now, uh, just to take you back memory lane concerning Team Nigeria. Well, Olympics start the next 30 days, and uh, Super Falcon will be playing against Brazil. We will also be competing in 11 different sports. 87 of Nigerian athletes are already there, and they are trying their best to see how they can be on the podium finish for this Olympics taking place in Paris for 2024. Now, let's leave Olympics alone. Let's come back home and talk about other sports in moment. And this time around, we go to the second tier of Nigerian Football League. The one we call NNL, Nigerian National League, confirms relegation of 12 clubs to NLO. NLO is Nationwide League One. That is the third tier of Nigerian League football ahead of 2024-2025 season. Well, we look at those, uh, let's look at the 12 teams. Now, Stomas FC, Abel Kuta, uh, part of the team related from NNL to NLO. Ikiti United FC of Ado Ikiti. 1472 FC of Lagos. I remember that team. The name is always <laughs> a cake name. 1472. They are back to uh, Asian Wild League One now. FC One Rocket of Uyo. Giant Brillers. FC of Enugu. Trade Safe. They didn't trade safe enough. They are, they are now in the top tier uh, from Lagos. They are NAF FC. What happened to their Jets? NAF FC of Abuja relegated to NLO. ABS of Villori from NNL. EFCC. <laughs> what happened to EFCC? What's the way to go? EFC FC of Abuja. Melataki KFC of Abuja. Chicago, the stars of Duse. And City FC of Abuja. About three teams there, or four rather, from Abuja, not making it. And now they are relegated to the NLO. Well, EFCC, what happened? They've been. <laughs> um, this is not a financial financial crime. Activity. So this is football. This is football. So it's totally different. So a very good one for them. And so, okay, my take on this, and um, I think the NFF and um, they have to look at the modalities of those that are going to be relegated and those that will be promoted. Now, how do I say so? If you look at Almost all the teams, 80% of the team that we have are the Nigerian uh, National League. National League. No, 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 not National League. MPFL. The MPFL. Okay. 80% of them are owned by the government. And they have, they have been complaining. Even the players, the managers, everybody have been coming out that the funding is not really, really there. But when you have private individuals that own the club, they are more at the NNL and NLO. Yes. They are more there. However, you only have four people that normally get relegated from the NPFL hmm. to... Four N teams. Four teams. Four teams from the NPFL to NNL. Why you have about um, eight, 12 teams yes, from, from the NNL, NNL to, to NLO. NLO. So the mathematics to me is not encouraging the private individual that are managing those teams to have the opportunity to get to the NPFL. I need to make it 8-8. Eight, eight. It should be try in, try out. Right, you have four and you have 12. So that is not really encouraging because mm. before we start seeing sport development in this country, two things need to happen. The government, they have to release the hold they have on most of these their teams. One or two, they go through this route. Go through this route and they say, that, okay, let's increase the number of uh, teams that will be relegated from the MPFL. Mm. From four, let's take it to eight. Let's have eight from the NNL to be promoted to MPFL. Let's have eight that be promoted from the NL, NLO to the NLL. So that shows that if you are having eight teams that are migrating from the NLO to NLL and from NLL to MPFL. So the competition will be very dear. We have more of uh, private owned clubs competing at the lower keda lower keda and we have them at the higher keda also so we need to really see how to balance it but if you continue this way we we'll still continue to have the same issue uh the premier the premier league will start in the next few few days now you have a team in nigeria from kwara state they sack almost 22 players they want so all this issue will not really be there the govern the governors of each state that they are founding this through their commissioner for sport and what have you they are struggling to even pay the staff salary they are struggling to put infrastructure into their states and they still don't have enough money so they don't need to allow 
the beautiful pride of sport, that football, to be suffering when there are other options to use. I think they should look into this. Looking into this uh, concerning the NNL there, well, for the 12 team relegating to the Nationwide League One, we just highlighted them. And for next season, football will be starting any moment. Mm. And for MPFL, they are also back to ready. August 31st, all the teams will be uh, going for the next uh, champion of that particular league. 200 million naira at stake for MPFL and for NNL. They will also be fighting for the Super 4, uh, Super 8 and all that. Well, just to give you an update concerning that, they are still talking about Nigerian football. But this time around, we go southeast. We are the team that really made us so proud when it comes to cap interclub competition. Eimba International. Right now, they've been able to at least partner with some Polish clubs. Uh, right now, it has to do with uh, their chairman, Kanu Wanko, uh, in a way to expand opportunities for the team, exchanging of uh, programs and also uh, football players. Uh, that's very important. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good one. And a lot of people may differ that why Poland, you start from somewhere, it's far better than Nigeria, especially when it comes to training acquisition of skills, infrastructure development, then uh, it will be an opportunity also for most, for most of the players here to go on trial, to get exposed. Anytime they are off the season, they can go over there, have their training and come back. So I think this is a very, a very good one, though it is expensive. That's the truth. And I listened to the GM of Rivers United when he was talking about uh, the need to have m more money available uh, to the Nigerian and the MPFL team. That anytime they are going intercontinental to play outside the country, they spend minimum of 50 million. Hmm. Spend, they spend minimum of 50 million. 50 million naira. Yes, 50 million naira. So, so that they won't think it is dollar or pounds. So it is naira. So, and that is a lot of money. So they have to play about three or four matches at the group stages. So that means about 150, 200 million, 200 million naira that they have to spend. So how many governors can afford that? Let's assume we have a team from a state that they are struggling to even pay the minimum wage. Struggling to pay the civil servant the minimum wage. And they qualify to represent Nigeria. What do you think will happen today? So these are the reasons why they have to allow this privatization to take place. That's number one. Then for what uh, Yimba did with the help of Kano Wanko or what have you, I think other ex-footballers also that they have linked connection outside this country, they'll start, they should start doing the same thing. Go to their respective states. Look at the club over there. Take it over in one way or the other and look at what they can use to bring development to the club so that the game of football can get better than what we have currently now. So I think it's a very good development. A good development there and the fact that uh, if you know that that team, if you are Kweme has been the technical director there and he's really holding his way with his brothers uh, for the fact that uh, he was uh, uh, instrumental to that meeting happening over there in Poland. For Kanu Wanko, Eimba International are all working together to see how they can exchange programs with Polish clubs. That would be nice. For development of football from here, all the other clubs in Nigeria also take a cue. We know that Raymond Stars have a village with Ferenc of Portugal. Why other teams will also be doing this? And before we know it, well, the league will actually get better there. Well, I'm still talking about uh, football in Nigeria now. We go uh, continental where we have Confederation of African football, the one we call CAF. CAF knows that they've been in debt for a while, but now it's getting lower and lower. According to the Secretary General, CAF will be debt free by 2025. The emergence of uh, Mosepe Patrice, the South African billionaire, has really changed a lot of things because he has made sure uh, they follow uh, protocols and making sure that all the money they need to pay up, they are really doing that. And now the debt is really coming down. By next year, they'll be free from owing uh, people or companies. Okay. And when you have someone that understands the game of football, someone that appreciates what football brings to um, to a, to a nation and to a continent and someone that sees football as a business because he owns a club also, he has done it before. What we are saying is what we'll be seeing. The result is what we'll be seeing. I recall when um, Issa Yatu left and um, Ahmad took over as the CAF chairman and it was a hundred million dollars that I had to claim he left for Ahmad. And when Ahmad became the CAF president. We know what he did. Increased salary, spending money left, right, and center. But since uh, Mosepe took over in 2021, we've seen the tremendous changes 
and decline the debt. That, the decline. Mm. Currently now, what uh, CAF is owing is $40 million. And for him to come out and say that uh, we'll be free of debt, so that means we are going to be running on profit as a continent, it shows that he has a plan already on how to get this $40 million from partnerships, sponsorship, adverts, and a lot. So that is what we need in Africa. That is what we need in each country. That is what we need to develop the game of football. So I think kudos to him. He has done a very, very, very good job. And to let you know that the last AFCON that we actually was hosted in Cote d'Ivoire, Cav was able to make about $4.4 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look at it, according to the Secretary General, next quarter it will reduce by $12 million. And before January, uh, everything should be cleared up. And that means that really CAF is doing something wonderful to see how they can be debt free by 2025. And for CAF, they are showing good examples. So Nigerians should also take cue from this. Uh, by doing <laughs> seriously, <laughs> something must be done because if we have uh, CAF as our at least uh, they, they supersede Nigerian Football Federation and to some extent they have some say over us, so we should also take a cue by from them by finding a way to make sure our own football uh, is as good as this. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to remove politics from football in Nigeria if we want to get it right. We have to remove politics from football, the number two, we have to be transparent. If we ask now the NFF, how much are you owing? Who are the people that you are owing? And how much are you making are you from making all the sponsors? All the sponsors. So let's take it to each state also. So transparency, politics away from football, transparency. If you can remove these two, and people can see what we have on ground. You see a lot of people that want to come in and invest and do one way, one thing or the other. If you don't do that, just forget it. They will tell you that I'm not obliged to give it to you. It's well, confidential. We just saw that something good will come concerning Nigerian football, Nigerian sport. We really need to take uh, it seriously as business. Sports can really change the narrative in Nigeria, be it youthful unrest uh, and all that, because we know that a lot of youths really want to go into that. It might just be mental sport, it could be physical sport, it could be combat sport, whatever it is, as long as they are competing and making a lot of revenue for Nigeria. Who says? And also, employing them will also help. And we just uh, to let you know that a lot of families will also be liberated via sport. It's really business. We just need to take it serious, not as a mere uh, exercise or where some people see it as an avenue to embezzle money. Something must be done concerning this. Sport is really very, very huge. Worldwide, as for Nigeria, it shouldn't be uh, a separate case. Now, just making case concerning Nigerian sport development there, we've been talking on the show, 360 Sport, with Olali Peters in the studio. Well, right now, let's uh, talk about a team who are really tired to see how they can uh, brand some, uh, their club the way it is in the foreign land there. Let's talk about Lobby Stars of McCordy. Well, Lobby Stars unveiled 2000, uh, 2024. 25 league season home and away jersey and you look at the jersey uh well beautiful jersey you have the the blue the white and the red uh this is a good one very good one it looks very nice and um i don't it to look nice like this physically <laughs> <laughs> definitely it will. and then um, like you you mentioned and uh, if it takes sport and football serious in this country and it will liberate a lot of families. Uh, it will take a lot of people away from the streets. Now, let's imagine that what is uh, what has been done in Europe, because every season, each club will come out with their new jersey. New jersey. They will unveil it. To unveil it. <clears throat> let's assume we are having the same thing as part of our process for the NPFL. And also that all the jersey should be made in Nigeria. So we have 20 clubs. So all the 20 clubs, they'll have to get the jersey done in Nigeria. So that means we need someone, we need a company that will be in this country that will be manufacturing those jersey. Employment. So this, these are the things that we are missing if you are not taking football very serious. And look at that jersey. It doesn't uh, uh, look finer. Very fine. And the funny thing is It's finer that... than Manchester United jersey. because they are, they are is that what? Of course. Better than Manchester United jersey. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm sure they are listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Just, See, because if you look at it, to be now, candid, if we take ours seriously, we just it's just that I noticed something about Nigerians doing really a value what they have. Mm -hmm. Look at this jersey. If you go to the blue or to the red, oh man away, and us they are extra jersey. Look at it. Beautiful lobby stars written on it. The name of you know, you look at this and the fans chose the 
jersey, mm -hmm. the color, when it was actually uh, uh, drawn. Mm -hmm. And the fact that right now, imagine the players doing this color <coughs> and all that, the many 19 teams also are going to be unveiling theirs like this. Little by little, I just believe that our league is getting there. We are getting closer and closer to those days when we used to have it right in Nigerian league. Uh, okay, yeah, it's like we we'll take uh, one step and take another two. I'll take <clears throat> about five backward. That's the truth. And like you rightly said, apart from the players, even the fans also when they are going to watch the the league every weekend, everybody wants to have their own and brand it the way we normally brand the foreign club that we are all we are all supporting. Mm. Sincerely, I think we seriously need to look into that. I can't imagine having a company in this country producing all this jersey. Do you know the income that we'll be getting? Do you know the, even the government themselves, they'll be receiving tax from, those, com from those companies? That's something about sport. It's just intertwined. But like I used to say, whatever you study, you can actually use to work in sport Definitely. sector. Whatever it is you study, you are a doctor, the athletes are there for you to treat, pharmacists to prescribe mm -hmm. drugs, language you need to interpret. Mourinho started as an inter as a yes. interpreter. But, and today, we know that through interpretation, he became a coach. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of People, whatever you study, oh, you are, you are a data analyst, you are whatever you, you get do. It, you, get, you get it from sports. You will get I, where to work. I pray and I hope one day they will listen and they will do the writing. Because they know the writing. Mm. There's a difference between you don't know the writing and you're doing the wrong thing. But they know the writing, but they refuse and they don't want to do the writing. But we will not stop talking. We will not stop advising. Because this will help the, I mean, the country. It will help the economy. It will take a lot of people away from the streets. It will liberate a lot, a lot, a lot. Now, for example, now, uh, look at the musical industry. In those days, what were we listening to? Foreign. Foreign. But now... The foreigners are even the ones trying are, to listen to us. Listen to how mm. also. So why don't you take a, a, a leap from what happened in the musical industry and do the same thing in sport? And really, we are dominating to some extent now. Nigerian athletes, whichever sport you want to mention, they know internationally, they know them that these guys are good. They, 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 they have, have what it takes. We're talking about population this time around. The population is to our advantage, but unfortunately, some people are using it against, to, us. against, against us as a disadvantage. So once we do mm. that, instead of now, the Premier League, the La Liga, uh, Champions League, all will start on the 13th, 14th of August. A lot of people are waiting for that to start. Why are we not waiting for our, for our own MPFL <laughs> to start? Oh, I want to go to Cardinal uh, Township Stadium. I want to go to Kano Stadium. I want to go to uh, Adama Singba. I want to go to... Why are we not doing that? Not that we are not ready to do, to, to do it, but the government, they are not providing the enable environment or allow people that can run this. And I can put it out to them. Let them come out and say, oh, okay, from today... We want to hands off from all, most, these clubs. all these clubs. We only control about 5 or 10%. Those that are in, interested come in and do what? And invest in it. You see what will happen to the Nigerian football in the next one or two years. Hmm. It will be the pride of Africa again. Well, from the way it is right now, look at this. Uh, well, <laughs> see some jersey. See the jersey of uh, Manchester United. And look at uh, Chelsea. And now look at ours. Look at Lobby stats. Well, Let, let's I, let's be I, sincere. I, I said it earlier that Manchester United they're always having the worst of the jersey every season. What about Chelsea? Which, what, which what, 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 what about Chelsea? Let, let's not go. Which, there. Which, one, which one is Dragon? Which one is Dragon? You want to you want to use part Dragon no, to win the league? Look or what? at the jersey. Okay, can we have Lobby? If you have Lobby stats now, this is look at Lobby. I'll choose Lobby before I Seriously, go for another Seriously, it's, it's finer, it's beautiful, more beautiful. Yeah, I'll go for Lobby before I go for any other Chelsea. And that's why we continue to hammer on it, for people to really know. That's why, at, at times, I've met people that will be like, you guys are always, we love the way you are pushing Nigerian story in sport. Really, most of the times, we really need to push around for people to oh, know. Yeah. The more they keep seeing it, they keep saying, okay, you know, at times, somebody else will have to force you <laughs> to take Definitely. something. Definitely. So this is uh, our own uh, team, Lobby Stars. Uh, Jesse and uh, comparing it to that Manchester and also Chelsea, yes, they are international, but believe you me, they are not uh, as beautiful as our lobby stars. And you can look at Aimba, Remo Stars, Rangers International, not forgetting all the remaining clubs, Cano Pillars, all donning the colors that they really want, and it's always very beautiful. And we continue to push for Nigerian sports. 
to get better and also get promoted. Well, right now, before we go, we run through some of the transfer <laughs> gossip for you. Our, our player, former uh, Eagles player, Dost, you can still come back to that team. Uh, used to be with them. Ogene Karo Etebo, remember him? Fantastic player in the midfield. Etebo is to join Turkish club, Genkla Baligi of Turkey. At least he's coming back. He has played in Galatasaray's mm -hmm. talk and all that. But good one is coming back to uh, football. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good thing. And what is important for him to do right now is to have enough playing time. Mm -hmm. Enough playing time will, will make him to have the confidence and to to get back to what he used to be. And he has PP. The pace is there for him. He has the pace and he has the strength also. So I think this will be an opportunity for him to launch himself back to limelight. Launch himself back limelight there for Ganaka Royal Table. Nigerian can't wait to see him coming back again to play for Eagles. Really fantastic player. And before we go, let's talk about Axton Villa signing Amado Onana in the 50 million pounds D from Everton. Onana keeps growing every day from Lille to Everton was 22 million pounds, but now 50 a whooping sum of money. Okay, I don't know what's going on with Everton. Hmm. It's like their destiny is to be relegated. <laughs> As in the way they are selling their The way player. they are selling their top <laughs> players. And Aston Villa, I will give it to them. And I hope uh, they are not um, giving themselves a lot of pressure because they are the most active Premier League team in the market, in now. The market now. So a very good one. Onana is a very good uh, defensive and midfielder. A very, very good one. Box-to-box -box player. A good one for Amado Nana there, joining Axton Villa, the Villa Park next season, where we'll be donning the color of that team led by Unai Emery there. But for Everton, Everton is turning to Aston Villa, Aston Villa is turning to Everton. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way of talking, talking about that particular team there. Aston Villa really trying to make some mark when it comes to Premier and also Champions League. For next season, they are buying players as if it's so easy to get them. But let's see what they'll be doing next season concerning that team. And before we go, experience of Tunisia, a team that bought a player called Anayo Wala from Ayimba International. They refused to pay the sum of 3,500 euros, and that cost them a ban from FIFA. But now they've actually settled that amount of money, according to the news. Experience of uh, transfer ban lifted by FIFA after settling Ayimba's FC debt. It's good to know that anybody is getting income from what they deserve <laughs> from. I, 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 think, I, I really don't know the reason why the experience of Tunis would do what they did then, but it's very good that Ayimba took it upon themselves to fight for the injustice, and justice has been served, so it's a very good one. And, and I love the fact that, you know, FIFA making this a very strong cause, that yeah. if you don't settle this, I even saw a particular player, a great career there about, that was not settled about 70% of his money by a club, and now they've paid about 50% and they have to finish up before they also so get the ban lifted. Well, anyway, we've been able to run through our story for you on the show today. 360 Sport on Trust TV with Olale Peters. <clears throat> and before we go, next season. <laughs> Thank you so much. Maybe sir. seriously, next season I'm going to be MPFL or Lover, straight up. Why? Uh, I begin to love, uh, fall in love with those JC. Okay, I understand. After you've experienced a lot of heartbreak, I hope I'm winning last season. I hope I'm winning this season. <laughs> I hope I'm winning. So I, we have to I hope they win it. I was just trying to give them a round <laughs> So you're not using a collective noun for something you are using a singular noun that we before. So it's now they. That's part of the sports by uh, oh. I have to make it, uh, at least they need to be happy. The fans, Arsenal fans, we're getting two times now. Uh, come on. The elephant is always on the tree, falling <laughs> off. <on> the, <laughs> Well, I need to make them happy every time. I and I saw a particular drawing where elephant is back on the tree. They said for the third time, <laughs> <laughs> will the elephant stay there? Well, actually, I think as now, and they are the only team that can give uh, Manchester City the tight. I mean, the the fight for their money this season. Uh, I see them doing more than what they did last season, and they are a team that they they've improved for the last three season. Mm. That's the truth. But this season, apart from Arsenal, I don't see any other team, I any other team them. that will withstand Manchester City. Because almost all the other teams, Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester United, they are going through one restructuring or they are not stable. So it is only Arsenal that they are very, very stable. Look at Kai Havertz. Look at what he did just last season within one season. So you can imagine what you will do next season. And mm -hmm. if you look at the, the striker that we have in the world right now, you can't, if you want to pick the, the top five striker that we have, you're going to pick either Kai Havertz or Gilbert Yuzos. So that shows that next season, sincerely, mm. it's really, really for them. I hope they will not disappoint like they used to. Well, just uh, to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, Adina. It's my pleasure being here. Okay, good one out there. As well, we said that sports.
it's business and fitness. I'm Adeni Aji Shafe. Thanks for watching. It's a goal! Pillow Star Shikagaba! Pillow Star Shikagaba!